so for the next two hours or so, we're going to go through effectively the hand calculations if you were going to design a long span post tension beam by hand. Now, obviously, none of us are going to do that if we want to make any money um, doing it quickly. Obviously, we're going to use software, but obviously, with most things, it's good to know what the software is doing. So if you get odd results or something doesn't look all right, you could hopefully do a relatively quick calculations to see if, you know, something is, looks correct or where maybe it's gone awry. So moving forward uh, real quickly, if you are interested in this topic and others, uh, as Maria mentioned, uh, my business partner and I wrote a book during the recession when we had nothing to do about 15, 10 years ago. Uh, it's currently in its fourth edition. Uh, we are constantly updating it based upon things we see or find or find interesting. Uh, it's currently used um, at Cal Poly Pomona, or sorry, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, uh, UCLA, uh, and a couple other universities for teaching post tension concrete. If you're interested, the first half of the book is the undergraduate class. The second half is what we call real world examples, a lot of pictures, a lot of um, detailed calculations, photographs, stuff like that that we do on a daily basis. Uh, chapter seven is specific to one-way slabs and chapter eight is specific to beams, which is effectively the framing system for long span garages. Now we're not gonna cover one-way slabs um, in this particular webinar, but in general, it's the same concept uh, as beams. It's just beams have a little more intricacy because there's a shear aspect to it. There's potentially a deflection aspect to it as well. So we're going to focus on beams in this particular uh, webinar. So just in general, long span garages are relatively thin slabs uh, supported by deep beams. If you've gone to, um, you know, the SoFi Stadium, LAX, any, you know, airport, casinos in Vegas, stuff like that, they have these massive, massive parking structures, which are typically done out of post tension concrete. The beams span, you know, very long distance, large open areas. The slabs are typically one-way systems and post-tensioning. Depending on where you are regionally, you use a five to an eight-inch post-tension slab. Those slabs will go between 18 to 30 feet again. In California, where I do most of my work, it's a five-inch slab that goes plus or minus 19 feet, something like that. If you're in the Midwest, Texas, stuff like that, they use a modified system that goes about 27 or 28 feet, something like that, with a seven and a half, eight inch slab, and again, the 60 foot plus spanning beam. So no rhyme or reason to why exactly, it's just how it developed regionally. But again, in my neck of the woods, you're looking at roughly 36 inch deep post tension beams, you know, in the 62 foot range supporting a five inch slab. Uh, girders at the drive entries go between two parking or two column spaces, so 36 or 54 feet. Uh, we're not going to cover the design of girders, but obviously it's very similar uh, to the design of beams. Uh, the beams typically don't require camber, but vibrations can be noticeable. I'll talk very quickly about deflections at the end of the presentation. Um, I've been doing you know, a variation of this webinar for a long time, and uh, this comment of don't require cambers, that's why I say typically and it highlights uh, an engineering firm that has a lot of long span. Um, you know, threw a gasket over this because they camber every single beam, uh, even though the deflections are relatively minor. So I changed it to typical to not say it's an absolute. But again, with anything, if you like to camber, great. If you don't, that's fine, too. The point of this is that when you use the right slab and beam depth with the right post tensioning, right drape, stuff like that, you should have minimal deflections. In general, whether it's a one-way slab, a two-way slab, a girder, a beam, podium, office, whatever it is, if you have the right slab thickness or beam depth, you use good post tensioning with balanced loads, picking it up, deflections should be almost a laughable issue. Um, if deflections are an issue, you probably want to uh, revisit a lot of stuff. As I mentioned before, there's some engineering firms that camber it, which is great, but again, vibrations, deflections, camber are typically unrelated. Anything going 60 feet, that's only going to be about three feet deep. You're going to have some vibrations. That's just the nature of that aspect ratio. But, you know, it's a parking structure. No one's living there, so hopefully it's a little more forgiving. Um, this is the exterior view of a, you know, quote-unquote typical garage. Hopefully you can see the columns are right here. The beams are there, there, and there at a roughly 18-foot center on spacing. Obviously, you can see the columns coming up here. Someone's adding the facades to make it you know, not look like a parking structure, even though it is. But effectively, you have column, 
column, column, column, column. Very regular spacing. This is the congested part of the job. When you go inside, it becomes a lot more spacious because those beams are going 60 feet.